is Jacob Hubbard. That's J-A-C-O-B-H-U-G-G-A-R-D. I decided to go pick pineapple after one of my good friends in my neighborhood uh, came back from Hawaii after a year of being there and told me how easy it was to pick pineapple and how much fun he had. Uh, I had just turned 15 and uh, I was excited about the fact that I could go make more than minimum wage. We were there for 11 month contracts. We'd come home every year for the holidays, but uh, the, the first time that I went over there, I was there from, from mid-January to uh, mid-December and, and went back for four more, uh, three more times like that, so a total of four years. We would go to work first and, and then do school at night or in, during our off time. Brian Pickett was kind of the everything. He was the, the head coordinator is what he was called. He worked for a company called Youth Developmental Enterprises and that was who recruited us and brought us over. He, he was also our, our uh, leader. He worked for Maui Land and Pine and, and was our uh, work supervisor as well as being our uh, branch president for the Mormon Church. My relationship with him started, uh, I remember being singled out by Brian just uh, almost the first day that I was there and, and it eventually progressed to him telling me how special I was and how much, how much he cared about me and how, uh, how much more important I was to him than anybody else there. He would uh, take me away from camp, treat me to things, and give me, give me responsibilities and, and rewards that nobody else got. Show up at my bedside in the middle of the night and say, let's go for a walk or let's go stargaze. Or, and, and all of that was kind of against the rules and, and a no-no, but he was the boss so he could do whatever he wanted. And I, I didn't understand at the time that he was grooming me, but looking back on it now, I, I, I really feel kind of stupid. But, but at the time, I had no idea what was going on. Part of our, uh, we called it our uh, contract or our agreement, was to go to, to some uh, religious service. And since most of us came from Utah, most of us were Mormons. About 90% or 95% of the, the boys that went were Mormons. All of our services were held in the cafeteria. It, it doubled as a meeting house, a cafeteria. We'd watch movies there on Friday nights. It was kind of the, the community center for, for us as pineapple pickers. Then about five years ago, uh, I, I made an effort to contact Brian. I went and, and knocked on his door and, and just, I really wanted to hear his explanation for, for why he had done what he'd done and, and kind of, maybe I, I really wanted him to, to hear that he was sorry or, or hear him just justify what he had done. He didn't want anything to, to do with me and, and uh, my friend and I both tried to confront him and, and he made no effort. He, he didn't want to talk to us, didn't want to deal with us at all. He, he told us flat out that he couldn't deal with, with any of this and, and uh, we needed to leave him alone. I tried to talk to one of the, one of the uh, uh, company guys for Youth Development and Enterprises was, was uh, Lee Burnham. I talked to him and, and kind of went over what had happened and, and uh, he said that he would talk to some people at the Mormon church and, and get back to me but he never, Nothing ever came of that. I never heard from him again. I would like for other people that, that uh, went to the program and were, were possibly harmed or abused by Brian Pickett, I, I would really like for them to know that they have the option to come forward and, and maybe get some justice, get, get some kind of, uh, at least talk about it. And, and now is the time to bring it, bring it up. In April of 2012, the, the legislature of Hawaii opened a window up for, for uh, victims of sexual abuse in Hawaii and, and they gave us a, a two-year window to bring cases up so that we could, we could pursue our abusers and, and find some justice. And that law, uh, it, it sunsets or it closes April 24th of 2014, so, so the window's almost closed.